right, so we're here to talk a little bit about Gravit today, um, and we're going to explore the line tools today is our big goal. So I've opened up Gravit here on the screen, um, and I'm just going to create a new design. I'm going to grab a, a fairly decent sized piece of paper, so I'm just going to grab a, an AO sheet of paper. So I've created a page um, for me to work on. Um, once again, your pages are listed over here on the left-hand side, and once again, you can rename them. So I'm just going to call this one Line Practice, and it gives me my Line Practice right here. So the Line tool is the most basic tool in Gravit or any design program. Um, it simply lets you build a single solid line from one point to another point. So I'm going to have my mouse, I'm going to come up here to the top. The line tool is located in the shape, box, shape tool drop down. Um, so it's right here on the top. You notice when I put my mouse over it, it gives me a real quick demonstration of how it works. Um, and you'll notice over here to the right, it's got a little L. So that is the keyboard shortcut to access that tool. So if I press the L button anytime that I'm not typing text, um, it'll automatically open up the line tool for me to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now the moment I clicked on it, over here on the right hand side in our sort of options dialog, it changes to the line options pieces. I'm going to leave them at the default for right now. When I put my mouse over the main portion of my page, you'll notice it changes to a little crosshair. It's also got some numbers next to it. So those numbers again, represent the X, Y coordinates of the starting point or where my mouse is. So if I click, well, what happened? Nothing happens. So the thing to remember with the line tool is that you have to click and hold. So I'm left clicking and holding. It starts where I first click and I can just move my mouse and it draws a line. Okay. If I let go, now I suddenly have this line. Click on it to select. And on the right hand side, my options have gotten a little more complex. So number one, you have all of your positioning data. So this is not only where it's X, Y's, which I can then change. So you'll notice as I raise that number, I'm scrolling my mouse wheel in this case, it's going to the right, my Y, if I reduce it, it's going to the top. If I increase, it goes down. Because remember, um, on these, the location of zero, zero is this upper left hand corner of your page. Okay. Um, I also have size, so how long or how high it is, the angle it's spinning at, things like that. So the next things to look at are these. If I go down to fills, you'll notice there is no fill. And that's because it's a line. There's nothing to fill. It's just like you take a pen and draw a line. It's automatically the color of your pen. That's what happens. There's nothing to fill in. But on that borders, which in this case is our line or our stroke color, um, I can change that for several things. So, for example, if I want to be a little thicker, I can change from one point to ten points. Notice it gets a little thicker as we go. I can also change the color of that line. So maybe I want it to be red. Um, the other things you can modify, the ends and whether it's dashed. Let's look at those a little bigger. To make this a little more obvious, I'm going to blow this up to 50 points. And then I'm going to zoom in. Now, to zoom in, I'm going to press Z and drag a box. We can also use this zoom option or control plus and minus on my keyboard. Okay. So zooming in like this, I can see my line. It's a lot bigger. It just makes it a lot easier to see. So let's look at some of our options. When I click on the additional options, the first thing you'll see is ends. So right now, our line is a path connecting two anchors, which are these white dots. Moving those white dots or those anchors changes the, the where the line goes. Okay, it changes the path between those two points. At the end, you'll notice that our line extends beyond our anchor. That's because we're on what's considered a square end, where whenever you draw a line, it completes that line around it equidistantly. We can change that to a rounded end, and you'll notice instantly it changes from that squared off to a curved end. And then you also have a butt end or a flush end where it stays squared off, but the line ends exactly at the point where your anchor sits. Okay, So those are the different options. The default is this standard square end, and that's 
just what the default is. You can change it however it makes work, um, however it works best for the artwork that you're doing. Now, joins don't really do anything right now. You notice I can click all I want. It doesn't change anything because those joins don't have anything to join to. But since those joins don't have anything to join to, we'll have to look at that in just a second. The next option is dash, gap, dash, gap. So this is how you turn a solid line into a dashed line. So let's take a look. So if I want my dash to be, say, half an inch, 0.5, and I want my gap to be 1, well, nothing seems to happen. Why not? Well, because we're not dealing in inches, we're dealing in millimeters. So maybe instead I want it to be 50 and my gap to be 50. Let's see what happens there. Oh, we're still having an error. So why is this giving us an error and it's not turning into a dashed line? Well, a lot of it has to do with the size. You have to think, if our artwork right now, our line, is 535 millimeters long, if we're changing it to just 50, it's just not that much. Let's, let's blow that up. Let's go up to, say, 150 and 150, and suddenly now we can see it. So the size of a dashed line like that is really affected by the actual visual size of the line. If your line is really, really small, say it's 10 millimeters long, and you put in a dash or a gap of 5 millimeters, it just it's not going to look like it does anything. So that's something to think about if your dash lines don't seem to be working correctly, is how big is your dash and gap compared to the length of your line? I'm going to go ahead and delete those out. I'm back to my solid line. And now let's look at end points. So starting and ending arrows. I can automatically add, for example, a circle at an end point, or a diamond, or even a standard arrow with a bar, um, standard line arrow. Now, one thing to notice, because we have these square ends, the line extends beyond it. It doesn't look right. So if we put this back, to one of these, well, you'd think that the butt would end, but it doesn't. So things we have to think about are <coughs> how does this connect our line to something else? So in this case, let's blow this up to being much bigger. So we can see that end a little bit better, but we're still extending beyond the piece there. So we have to figure out how can we adjust that? And there it is. There's literally a device called Position, and you can adjust where does that fit on the piece? Now, the default is that it's going to attach itself to the anchor point um, at the end of the line. So if I come in here and add, for example, on the other side, a let's say a double line. Well, my double line, double thickness line, ends right there. But I can manipulate it because it locks itself to that end point. Um, you can even come back in, do arrow pointer get a really teeny tiny one, and again, you can make it bigger or smaller. Say so maybe I want this one to be huge, so 500% of the original size. Um, and it gives me these options. And now, when I grab this line, if I move it, those arrow ends, or the, the end caps basically, move with it. So I don't have to manipulate them separately, and I can still change the length of my line, how far it goes, what direction it goes, and it automatically adjusts those end caps for me without me having to do that myself. So auto scaling borders means that if I increase the border of something, um, for example, if I built a box out of these and I increase the size of that box, it's gonna scale, for example, the size of the line, so from 50 points up if I make it bigger. It's something we don't normally have to deal with unless we're changing the size of something greatly, either making it a lot bigger or a lot smaller. So other than that, you still have all your standard effects down here at the bottom, okay? But the last thing I really want to talk about is I want to talk about connecting lines into shapes. So normally, oh, we need to default all this stuff out again. So none and none. So now normally when you draw something like this, I'm going to shrink this down just to make it a little easier to see. You draw a line. And then say you decide, well, I need to draw a line and I need to make a triangle. So you draw these three lines together. And hey, you, you've got a triangle. And you say, well, I have this triangle, but I want to fill the triangle with a different color. So maybe I need a, a 
triangle has a red border with black fill. So if you grab it all and you come over here to fills and you say, well, there's no fill. So I'm going to hit this plus button. I'm going to add a fill. And I say, well, no, I want it to be, well, maybe not black. Let's say I need a red outline with a green fill. But nothing has happened. So we have to figure out why didn't it happen. And the reason why is because these individual pieces are just that. They're individual pieces. They are not actually connected. So in order to fill an object, your object has to be connected into one single piece. And there are several ways to do that. But the easiest way is this. We're going to select all of our pieces. So we have all three lines connected together. And we're going to come up here to modify. So modify is where Gravit keeps all of its manipulation tools. So I'm going to come down here to path because our lines are paths. Okay? They're just connecting anchor points. So they're called paths. Now, the initial thing would say, oh, well, I want to join paths. That's a little disingenuous. Joining paths, what it does is it merges your paths onto the same layer, puts them right next to each other. It doesn't actually connect the endpoints. So while it's a good initial thought, it's not what we want to actually use. So we're going to come down here to connect paths lines. So we've got these three paths, and we're telling it to connect the endpoints. So if you do that, click, and suddenly... Ours fills in because we'd already had that filled. But our piece here is actually one single piece as well. We can come back here. When we grab it, it moves the entire thing. We can now resize and reshape it as one single unit. Now, something to think about, if you look really close in here, you'll notice that our lines cross. They don't actually meet. I didn't line them up fully when I did it. So it's something to think about is that when you're going to do something like that, you'll need to actually make sure that these line up. Now I can grab this and move it over using the individual select or the sub select arrow. And that allows me to move that individual piece as well. But that's the basics of the line tool. Once again, it just allows you to draw single lines, change the style of the stroke. So it's like changing what kind of pen are you drawing with a pencil or a marker or a Sharpie? or a paintbrush. You can apply a whole bunch of different things to that path. Okay? Um, and then you can take those and you can combine them into unique shapes. Now there are other ways to build shapes, both the shape tools and the pen tool that are a lot more powerful, but sometimes the simple uh, tasks are the best ways to do things. So that's the line tool. Um, so we'll go through and we'll have some time practicing with the line tool.